the Thailand pair yesterday and earlier today defeated Kukiwa and Maeda of Japan. It's been quite sensational since they formed their partnership, which was after they played against each other in the World Championship final in Paris in 2010. So they are the number two seeds because they finished the Super Series year after playing eight tournaments, ranked number two, five finals from their eight tournaments, winning four of them. There's Gunchela. Turned 29 last month, born in Bangkok. Her partner, Duang Anong Arunkison, also 29 years of age. They're making their fifth appearance at the Super Series Finals. This is the sixth time that we've had Super Series Finals. They've only missed one year, that was in 2011, when they failed to qualify, finished the year at 21. Two years ago, this year, having competed in all six, yeah, all 12 tournaments, second consecutive year that they've done that, supported the Super Series right the way through, and finished at number six. But here are the world number ones. Number two seeds, as I say, only eight Super Series tournaments, five finals, and they're 39 and three. New win loss record, not as impressive as their career win loss record. I can tell you that they have played 34 tournaments, they've contested 29 finals, winning 23 of them. Goodness me, that is outstanding makes their three quarterfinals that they've had this year look probably pretty poor by their standards. Well, they played against Reika Kakiwa and Miyuki Maeda yesterday. 35 minutes needed. It was a very, very easy second game. Very close first game as well. But their W there means they, they won that encounter. Well, for the Thailand pair, older than their opponents, Yu Yang, of course, 27, Wong Siali only 24. Uh, both these Thailand players, 29 years of age. And as I say, their fifth time that they've made the Super Series finals. Now, the win loss record for the year in the negative. 12 tournaments played in the Super Series, 16 tournaments in total. Remember, of course, that team competition is a count towards world ranking, so in case you're wondering why they've had more losses than tournaments played when they haven't won any titles, that's why. And yesterday they lost to the number three seeds, last year's beaten finalists. World Championship bronze medalist Christina Peterson and Camilla Oroteu. Two straight games, 35 minutes. So this is the fifth meeting between these two pairs. And you can see from the previous four, well, the world champions have won all of them. In fact, the Thailand pair have never taken a game the last time they met was in the Uber Cup finals last year. And as you can see, it was pretty straightforward on that occasion. So for the Thailand pair, just one semi-final this year. And they reached that semi-final at the China Premier Super Series event because in the quarter-final, they received a walkover from Ma Jin and Tang Xinhua. Ma Jin her calf muscle and pulled out of both the women's doubles and the mixed doubles in Shanghai. So apart from that semi-final, I think perhaps what is concerning, if you're a 
fan of the Thailand pair is the fact that they've had eight first round losses in 2013. Had two second round losses as well in 10 tournaments where they've lost first or second round for a pair that's been as high as four in the world ranking. You have to go back for, to 2011 when they were number four in the world. Suggests that they're just struggling a little bit at the moment. Denmark will be our umpire for this. So we build him our service judge. the defending champions and the three times winners of the Super Series finals getting this B match underway and Jim I was just mentioning the fact that the Thailand pair have had eight first round losses and two second round losses so ten times this year they've lost in the very early stages for a pair that has been as high as number four in the world you know, I don't know whether I was a bit harsh and whether you felt that when I said that, that perhaps they've, it's a sign that they've been struggling One, of late, whether that's fair comment or whether their style of play, they've played together for a long time now, 11 years together, whether perhaps there's a little bit of staleness in, in their style of play and whether the game in general has moved on and they haven't moved on with it. I think the game has definitely moved on. If you took up the top players, I think you could say that Lady Stubbles has moved yeah. into a different direction yeah, with so someone too. a few years yeah. ago. Um, Signal, so, you know, I don't think they've they have progressed as a, as a pair. So, so, so they're a little bit. I think that has, sometimes they can happen if you play, and even it doesn't really matter how good you uh, you are. But Sometimes you need a different motivation. We've seen it's been successful, being split up and then coming back together. And maybe that's what they need. Um, China is good at it. Um, not because they, they seriously want to split up the pairs, but they split them up and maybe that gives some different motivation and, and, and that improves them as badminton players. 11 years is a long, long time. Yeah. It's a long relationship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, um, yeah, they've started in very positive fashion. Yeah, that's good to see. But also, I mean, just picking up on the point I made about the world champions and defending champions here, 34 tournaments played together as a partnership, 29 times they've reached the final, winning 23 of them. That is an extraordinary record. Just It's an interesting thing. I mean, you talk about the motivation and perhaps the Thailand pair having played together for so long, there might be a little bit stale or 
whatever. But I wonder, in a way, when you're as successful as the Chinese pair have been, <laughs> winning virtually everything that they've entered, of course, the one sort of black mark on their CV is what happened at the Olympic Games, and I don't want to go into that again. But obviously, with that disqualification, they don't have an Olympic medal. They have a World Championship gold medal. They have two World Championship gold medals. And, you know, you sort of think, virtually, there was a stage until very, very recently, recent months, where every tournament they entered, they, they won, basically, or they were in the final. And I, I wonder whether their motivation of, you know, well, not that it's too easy, but, you know, it must seem a long time for you players to think ahead to the next Olympic Games, and especially for you young at the age of 27. Will she still be playing in Rio? Will she be still one of the top doubles players? And, you know, where is she going from here? Yeah. I think they're right there or there. Well, you can see, if you look at the Lee Cheng Wei, he has the same kind of thing to his game that when he shows up, he, he never take anything for granted. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, and he's just very consistent. And I just think we have the same here in, in the ladies' doubles. And so you never, you seldom see them just, you know. Yeah, Lee Chong Wei doesn't uh, struggle with his motivation. He's no. just as motivated as ever. Yeah. They, they, they just have that gene in them where when they are on court, they want to win. And I'm pretty sure if you went down there and had a chess game with them, they wanted to win as well. Or yeah. Whatever <laughs> a competition, they just have that. A champion's mindset. Exactly. Competitive in everything. Oh, it's the Thailand pair that have the advantage at the mid game interval. This wasn't in the script. Yeah, well done, the Thailand pair. The reason I, I brought it all up, Jim, is because I, I wonder whether that aura of invincibility that seemed to surround the Chinese combination of world champions, I think that has been broken. I don't think they have that same aura anymore. I think other pairs now believe that they can be beaten. Yeah. Three quarterfinals. I know one of the quarterfinals they withdrew from the quarterfinal with injury problems, but three quarterfinals this year. Well, you lose, you lose. so <laughs> you're not invincible anymore. No, exactly. Uh, uh, um, I still want to see you know, it being done over, you know, I, I think the you, can, you can win some three qualifiers, but one of them they pulled out. But. I think we're going to have a challenge here. There is a challenge from the Thailand pair. They thought that was in. Yeah, no, that's very clear by umpire Eric Kern. I thought that was out too. Yeah, one, yeah. Ch one challenge Seven. remaining, so the call stands. Seven. This has got to be sorted out because it really isn't clear to us what the review system has proven. But as I was saying, I think we need to see it over a period of time. I, just I still think if they're at the top of the game, they're, they're very difficult. Yeah, that I don't doubt that for one moment. But just looking at them and looking at them, that their body language, the, the way they are on court, to me, they're not oozing that confidence that they did in the past. They're not. Um, I'm not saying that they were arrogant, but they had that. The oh, only yeah. way I can describe it is that aura about them. If you're winning constantly, you always look a little bit arrogant. <laughs> Without wanting to look arrogant. Um. Now, 
those straight points it's in the game in form in favour of the world champions there's no doubt in the motivation I think she's so creative. I think she's got such a wonderful disguise as well with her shots. She's probably got one of the hardest specials in the game as well. year that you and I were discussing the merits of the two Chinese players and and I said that I felt that Wangsi Ali was the better of the two. Or was that almost two years ago now? I think it was this year, wasn't it? Yeah. She was Olympic champion with Du Jing. I, I think, in a way, we, we get influenced to think that she must be the better player. Yeah, no, but that's, that's just necessarily right. No. Yeah. No, you see, look at that. That is just absolutely magnificent. First the straight one, then cross court. She plays that with pace, keeping it flat over the net. And with that moment of magic, out comes game point opportunities. Defending champions. Yeah, I'm not taking anything away from the Thailand pair. They're, like, they're not even in. They're not even at the top of that game here. They, they, they're doing just what's needed. Oh, that's a disappointing miss from Kunchela. So, okay, 
21-17 to the three-time defending champions. Mm. I think just used too big a swing of the racket. It's very yeah. difficult to time it when you've got a big swing like that. <laughs> she really went for it. Yes, yeah, she did, <laughs> didn't she? <laughs> 15 minutes. And the world champions take the opening game. only hit the shuttle that's only the second time in the rally she's hit the, hit the shuttle very much keeping Wong Sui Li to the back of the court yeah and, and good signs for the Thailand pair because they have the drift with them now and the, it's important for them to control it and if they can find the back court it'll be very wise nice. that first one rackets back up ready to intercept the second direction I thought her left ankle just gave way underneath her yeah. Yeah, it seems to be all right I 
Certainly hope so. That's your worst Oh, yes, there we go. So did some of the so. Mm. Have you seen anybody smile when you twist them? So I think she's okay. Close. Men's doubles, Hashimoto and Harata. Six straight points. Up to now. Seven straight points. Seven two. See, they still have some of the, you know, I don't think the, I don't think the Thailand pair has shown that kind of attitude they're supposed to show if they're to, to, to have a chance in this match. They gotta show more believing. You can't win against this fantastic doubles pair from China. We're just showing an attitude for two runners. You need to show it from the start to the, to the end. Oh, such a good smash, not only power but placement as well. You can see she, she can almost see Contrilla covering that. You see she flips the record, she's covering the right side of the hip. So very smart. Wonder how quick that was. There's one thing I think the Thailand pass should use. They seem to be able to play on that side and use the back ball. So use it and then counter them. Yeah, but I, would, I personally would only use it when I'm pushing Yu Young to the back yeah, of the court. Yeah. I wouldn't lift a Wong Siali. Not too many. Oh, you can lift her, but you gotta make a move. You can't lift straight to her. in women's doubles as I can testify to. Benefit of making 
Chinese man work for it. Then the chances will come. Just one Super Series title on their CV. The Thailand pair, that was the French Open 2010. One Super Series final they've been in. And one. Well, we see little glimpses, don't we, from the Thailand pair of how they can win these rallies, but... Yeah, but it's mostly when they're, you know, they're behind. Mm. <laughs> um, that could, could be one of the things that they need to improve. Yeah. I just think the challenge is too good for them. That they don't have, have any solutions. That's, that's sometimes you have to accept that. It's hard to accept. <laughs> yeah. And you shouldn't accept it fully. Um, but it's also easier when you sit outside. But I can't really see their way back into this match. Yeah, well taken. Yeah, I suppose it's much easier when you're a young player coming into the sport or just setting out on your journey to really challenge the best in the world because, okay, you can say to yourself, I'm, I'm definitely second best today. Yeah, man, I, you're I, happy with every point you win. Yeah, and I know what I can go away and work on. When you're both 29 years of age, as the Thailand players are, and you've been playing on the world circuit for as long as they have together, and you sort of say, Goodness, well, I'm not at the same pace. I haven't got the same power for me to improve my game to this sort of level. It's you don't have the same belief that no. you can go away and work on it and then come back the next time and challenge. No. So it's it's more difficult for the older players. I guess it's a bit like you know, there's been so much talk in the tennis world about Roger Federer and whether he's finished. Of course, he's not finished. He's still in the, you know, <laughs> the, exactly. He still makes semi-finals of, of Grand Slam events and so on. But for Federer now, into his 30s, people are saying, well, can he keep up with the physicality of the Murrays and the Djokovic's and uh, Rafa Nadal and so on? And for him, it's difficult because He's got to go away. He's got to find ways to improve his game to challenge these younger ones. I'm watching this Thailand pair and I'm seeing glimpses. You can do it, but whether they have the belief to, to go away and say, okay, we were second best today, but come January, 
come the start of the new Super Series season, will have worked on this and that. And that's that, the difficult thing yeah, for them. And, that, and that's what I doubt with yeah. these two. I, I doubt it. You know, yeah. Peter, Peter Gade had, had the same issue. You know, he played two, 35, 36. Uh, uh, um, and I know for a fact that he kept going. And, and if he lost the belief in that he could still have that chance to to beat the Lindens or the Legion Wales, he wouldn't have played. No, I he know. He would have continued. So, so you gotta have that, but I doubt it. I doubt it in the reaction I see in Korea. I doubt it when I see this. I've seen other players that have been in the same situation as they have, but they've had blood on their knees, as I would say. You know, they've mm. been fighting, and you've seen, you know. Mm. Yeah. Here it's more or less like. Oh, that's a challenge. Oh, there, yeah, there's a challenge. He was called in. Instant review system now in full swing. Right call. Yeah, I think we need the umpire to rather than just give the score. He's, I think he's got to make some announcement so that we're all aware that the the call was correct. The shuttle did land in. The score is now 13-17, so that there's absolutely no doubt for all of us watching exactly what happened, because at the moment we're not entirely sure. Yeah. But that happens. <laughs> but that was much better. Smash. 15, Sluggish reactions from you. Hey. different but why didn't they play like that all the time? Well, I'm not saying it's too late because it's definitely not it's only two point gap. Yeah but time is running out because the number two seeds only need another two points and they've won the match. Yeah. Showing the disappointment. 
once again a nice idea but wrong execution match point opportunities have arrived for the defending champions that's brilliant absolutely brilliant yeah. defense from Wong Xiao Li to close out the match symmetry in the scoreline 21-17 21-17 I think you summed it up, Jim, when you said that the Chinese pair were in cruise control. I'm sure they had another gear that they could That's go to, but just doing enough, Yang, enough 17, to cruise 21. to victory. Yeah, confirmation of the score, 35 minutes. Two matches played now, and two matches won. Well, that obviously means that tomorrow's group decider in Group B will be a straight playoff between Wang Xiaoli and Yu Yang. So three of our five matches concluded, and all three so far in straight games. Next up is mixed doubles and the defending champions from Denmark, Jochen Fischer Nielsen and Christina Pedersen. They're up against another Thailand pair, Sukip pra Prakamol and Sara Lee Thong Tung Kam. Then, of course, we've got men's singles to finish off tonight's play. Well, this mixed doubles, a Group B encounter. What an upset yesterday in Group B because the Thailand pair uh, beat the number two seeds and reigning world champions, Tontoi Ahmad and Liliana Natsia. So it means that with the Danes uh, beating Shi Chen and Ma Jin, so straight games, that this match we're about to witness. Both pairs have played one match and won one match. 